Sometimes I spend hours and hundreds of kilometers on these roads anticipating a glimpse of something interesting that might be just out of sight or over the next crest in the road. To some, at first glance, these structures might not look remarkable or interesting, usually just an empty shell of what once was. For me, these places have a story to tell of the people before us, and this is a reason why I'm out here searching the back roads. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm out on the back roads again, and today I'm exploring an old church. I've been meaning to get out here for a few years, but I've now just finally decided to come out. Unfortunately, it might be a couple years too late, as you'll see here in a second. It started to collapse, and it's on its last legs, but it still looks like a cool spot to check out, so let's have a look. So here's a quick look at my surroundings. And here's the old church right up here. And as you can see, unfortunately, it's folded in and collapsed. And there used to be a steeple there on the top too, that's also gone. So I've seen some photos over the years and even just up to, I think a couple years ago, it wasn't collapsed. So I've got here just a little bit too late. Here's a better look over on this side of the church. So this church is called the Notre Dame de Savoie Church. And it's over a hundred years old. It was built around 1915 and last used in the mid sixties. Yeah, there's not much left. A couple more years. This will probably be completely on the ground. And eventually you won't even know it was here. So this is why I try not to delay in exploring these places because a lot can change at this point now in a couple years. Once they start to go, they go quick. And now it's just home to the pigeons. You can see some pigeons up there. Yeah, there used to be a steeple right up there too. Over a hundred year old building. Here's one last look. And then we're gonna head on down the road. One area I keep finding myself returning to quite often is the Badlands of Alberta. The flat prairie drops away suddenly into what feels like a different world in a different era and time. Remnants of the coal mining industry can be found scattered all over the rugged landscape. The East Cooley Trust Bridge was first built in 1936 to service the Atlas, Monarch and other coal mines across the Red Deer River. The Atlas No. 3 coal mine dates to 1936 and is now part of a National Historic Site. It is home to Canada's last standing wooden coal tipple, which was used to sort and load coal. All that remains of Sharples today is the grain elevator and a few deteriorating buildings and foundations. The community was the location of two grain elevators. 
The one still standing, a parish in Heimbecker built in the 1920s, and the other was an Alberta wheat pole that was demolished in the 1980s when the rail line was abandoned. You can also see the remains of the railway bridge. Only concrete piers remain today. This branch line would have been shared between transport of grain and also coal from the Drumheller Valley. When the coal industry in the area declined in the 80s, this most likely also sealed Sharple's fate. As I get closer, I can start to make out the familiar look of what might be a one-room schoolhouse, sitting lonely and forgotten. This is what is found many times down these roads. Simply built and basic structures like this that were an important part of our history and a reminder of the early days of settlement in this area. So much is still waiting to be discovered on the back roads of Western Canada. It is pretty easy to see why I enjoy this hobby so much. Each location I document adds another piece to the story of a rich history and heritage that is quickly fading from the vast landscape. What treasures will we find next on the back roads? <laughs>